the road, you seem to be getting better. What are you doing better now, and what pleased you most about this victory tonight? Well, I think it was our defensive intensity. You know, the defense got to get our offense going, and I thought tonight we played good D. At times, we just try to outscore people. You know, tonight, I think we played good D. We had good intensity, and I think that was the big thing that made us happy. You know, we, we played the complete game, not just the one into the court, not just offense. I know you and your staff, you're, you're not just observing this game. What have you, your analysis of the first half? Uh, Evansville is amazing. They're just, uh, you know, a great team. They got great balance. Uh, the Shreffler's playing tremendously well. Uh, Half is tremendous. You know, so they got they got an outstanding team, and they can hurt you in a lot of different areas. They shoot the ball so well. They they are they're really tough. Uh, they deserve all the recognition they're getting. Pete, you have been to the NCAA. Your observations of the league. Is it better than it was a couple of years ago? No question. Jim Shaver's doing a marvelous job. They're getting better and better at the league each year. Each game, league, our toughest games each year is our league games. You know, we played a couple of top 20 teams, a couple of teams in the top 30, and our toughest opponents were our league games. You know, we lost to some of the top 20, top 30 teams, but the league games, the coaches are outstanding, the talent's great, the teams play well together, so there's nothing but bright future for our conference. Pete Gillen, congratulations. Thank you. And you're in. Pete Gillen's in the final, Wayne. One team decided. Back to you. All right, thank you very much, Mike Blake. And again, congratulations to Pete Gillen, head coach at Xavier. They uh, defeated St. Louis earlier tonight to move into the championship round of the MCC tournament. We'll return to the look at the halftime statistics after these words. You're watching the MCC championship on the MCC television network. Hi, I'm Scott Hafner of the University of Evansville. Did you know that thousands of young people are dying senseless deaths each year because of drug abuse? Drugs are a dangerous game. Please don't become another death statistic. Stay away from drugs and alcohol. Hi, I'm Jim Cruz, head basketball coach at the University of Evansville. Do you ever feel pressure to take drugs or alcohol? Just remember one thing, drugs are for losers. If you want to be a winner, then don't take the easy way out. I'd say the most difficult call is it has to be the charge block. Uh, it depends on where your positioning is on the floor and if the no, person No, it's a block, it's a block! Here! It's the decision to, that you have to make in determining whether the defensive player is legally in a guarding position before the offensive player uh, gets there. To me, the, the, toughest, the toughest call to make uh, is basket interference and goaltending, and that's uh, whether or not the ball was on its downward flight or not. Sometimes it begins to get guesswork. If the ball has reached its apex and started down, we have great athletes, and they can block shots at the very last minute. The main reason I feel that we maybe miss some of those, or maybe why it's so difficult, is, is the positioning that we have. And I've looked at enough films to know that sometimes the ball is moving up, and we should leave it alone. This message furnished by the NCAA. Halftime at the University of Dayton Arena. The Evansville Aces, the number one seed of the MCC tournament, playing on the lead here at intermission. Wayne Larrabee and Steve Brody. And we're going to get a look in a moment at the uh, halftime statistics, and I think you'll find them quite interesting. A long dry spell down the stretch in the first half for Dayton. The Flyers got stuck on, what was it, 13 or 15, actually. They're stuck on 15 and couldn't get off it. Yeah, it seemed like that when I'd say they scored six points in the last uh, 12, 13 minutes of the ball game. Uh, take a look at the stats, and you know, sometimes stats lie. I don't think these do. Uh, Dayton really guilty of trying to make too many difficult shots. They've got to regroup and and get Anthony Corbett on the on the on the board, and and really just kind of get you know, find a way of getting into some some good offensive uh, patterns and get some easy shot attempts. There you get a look at the turnovers. That execution for Evansville. They got off slowly from the field, and that's part of the reason why they didn't shoot 50%. They shot very well down the stretch of the first half of play. The uh, free throw shooting, I mean, that's something that, that is always going to haunt a team. And you, you come up three of nine in a half uh, from the free throw line. You're not going to leave many ball games. And, of course, Evansville executes six for six. Take a look at the individual stats. And the number one thing about the individual stats from what we can see is Anthony Corbett. Anthony Corbett his is not listed is there, <laughs> but his is the most significant stat. 0 for 3. Two factors. Number one, he didn't score, didn't make a field goal. And number two, he only got three shots in the first half of play. He was almost invisible. Well, exactly. You've got to design something. I mean, you have to get yourself open to get the shot. And again, then when he got the ball, uh, they played great defense. He put it on the floor. There was always someone else giving help uh, uh, defense. And against this type of a defense, you have to be very patient. 
and really putting the ball on the floor doesn't doesn't do much for you in a, a pressure helping man-to-man -man defense you've got to move the ball uh, from side to side good crisp quick passes if you're going to get any good shot attempts. Miguel Knight keeping uh, Dayton within shouting distance, hitting four of four from the field. He has 10 points overall. There's Hafner, and Hafner leading the way as usual. He is four of eight from the field, four of four from the free throw line for his 13 points. Schreffler did an outstanding job penetrating. He hit four of eight from the field, including two of four from three-point range. 10 points also had three rebounds. And Blob came off the bench, and Olaf Blob, uh, I think, uh, offered some defensive intimidation inside four points that's a, a bonus for them but he offered the defensive in intimidation inside and really took away anything that uh, Dayton had going down the lane well I he, I thought he played a great first half of basketball uh, five rebounds a couple of block shots and you know he established himself as a force in there and and really took away the the driving lanes to the basket well if you're Don Donaher Steve what are you saying to your team how are you going to get this thing solved to get back into it boy I'll tell you I I, I think that he's going to have to hope that Evansville doesn't play quite as well. And, and beyond that, again, it's, it's, you need great point guard uh, skills and, and point guard play in a ball game like this because they just got into a – they let Evansville get them into a situation where offensively uh, they were just too hurried. Uh, they've got to calm themselves down, handle the ball, and just you know, play with a little more confidence. Uh, of course, a few made free, uh, field goals will, will bring your confidence back. Absolutely, and get this big crowd – behind them but a lot of people have made their way up here from Evansville the Aces have a strong following and of course the home standing uh, Flyers of Dayton their folks well they didn't have much to cheer about in the uh, final 10 minutes of the first half they're hoping there's more in store here in the second half Evansville leads by 12 will return with the start of the second half of tonight's uh, semifinal game of the MCC championship tournament after these words on the MCC television network at Old National Bank the buck stops with Dan Opel here at University Square, we know you're always on the go. Getting to the bank's a cinch when you get a full-service branch close by. You deserve it. The buck stops with John Massey. At East Side, we take the time to get to know you. Our neighborly approach means you get the most from your neighborhood bank, including sound advice from people you know. Old National. It's double dealing days at Lindsay Lincoln Mercury Azuzu. What a deal on this special edition 89 Topaz, fully loaded and customized with a luggage rack, sunroof, and sports stripes for only $208 a month. Or this 89 Tracer XE two-door with over 68 standard features, including a special package of tinted glass, a sunroof, sports stripes, and aluminum wheels for only $99.99. The 89 Topaz or the 89 Tracer XE, two special editions only at Lindsay Lincoln Mercury Azuzu. Let's get the inside story on Prairie Farms Old Recipe Ice Cream. Remember how good ice cream used to be? Well, Prairie Farms Old Recipe still is. It's the classic ice cream made the old recipe way with fresh country cream, the best fruits, nuts, and all natural flavors. This is real ice cream from Prairie Farms, home of country fresh quality dairy products. Southern Indiana Tires breaking high prices with a price breaker guarantee. Bring in any other advertised price and Southern Indiana Tire will meet that price or beat it. Get Firestone's top of the line FR480 radial tires four for only $190. Southern Indiana Tire offers a 60,000 mile warranty on your purchase of Firestone FR480s and guarantees the lowest price at any of their 10 regional locations. The price breaker guarantee on quality Firestone tires only at Southern Indiana Tire. Now that's my kind of tire store. Ritzy's brings back America's favorite foods like flavorful chili made fresh every day, ready to add your choice of seven different ingredients like spaghetti, fresh grated cheddar cheese, diced peppers, tomatoes, onions, and red beans. Ritzy's, what makes us different is what makes us taste so good. Ritzy's has got the greatest all time taste. Nobody does it like Ritzy's. Oh, Ritzy's. Tonight's MCC Championship semifinal game between the Evansville Aces and the Dayton Flyers is brought to you in part by Old National Bank, your bank for life. Kenny Kent, downtown north side and east side. Your tri-state area McDonald's. Robert John and Associates. Southern Indiana Tire. Deaconess Hospital, the right choice. Your area snapper dealers. Schmidt Photo. Your area red and white food stores. Keister's. Lindsay Lincoln Mercury. Prairie Farms. Ritzy's. And by Han Oil and your Sunoco retailers. 
proud to be a sponsor of the NCC Championship Basketball Tournament, GTE, your total communications company. Wayne Larrabee and Steve Grody, halftime wrapping up here at the University of Dayton Arena. Again, we'll review the action for you in the MCC Tournament. Xavier beat Loyola in the first round, 85-83. The Musketeers ousted second-ranked St. Louis, 79-56. In the uh, semifinal game earlier tonight, they await the winner of this game between Dayton and Evansville. Dayton, a winner over Detroit, 77-54 in the first round and trailing here at halftime to the uh, top-ranked Evansville Aces. Well, if you're the Dayton Flyers, you're hoping you can put together the kind of intensity and execution that they had in the first five to ten minutes of the initial half when they built a seven-point lead. Exactly, and I, and I think they came out, uh, they were really ready to play. They were uh, very alert and aggressive defensively. Uh, and then I just think they let the, you know, they got a little frustrated. They let the defensive pressure get to them, and you know, they obviously need to get off to a real quick start here. Get the first two or three baskets, regain their confidence, and then just play basketball. Anthony Corbett will toss in right in front of our telecast position. Flyer basketball. It's hard to believe Anthony 0 for 3 from the floor in that first half of play. They have got to get him involved in the offense. He had three rebounds. Norm Grevy gets the start here at the outset of the second half. McCracken on the block had it blocked by Blob. Blob starting here in the second half in place of Dan Godfrey. Lob. That should be offensive, and it is. Lob with his third personal. That's the first team foul on Evansville here in the second half. Well, much like uh, Bob Knight did at Indiana, uh, Cruz rewards uh, the good play of Lob in the first half with the starting assignment out of the gate. And uh, just a good play on, on defense, held, held the position. Bracken double team, triple team. Hafner knocked it away. Shreffler picks up to Brian Hill. So there you see the difference. Now when when they threw the ball into McCracken and he got in trouble when he got double team, there was nobody for him to pass the ball. That's the one thing Evansville does. They they do a great job of spacing themselves. They always have someone to pass it to, regardless of where they are offensively on the floor. Shreffler off the pick by Blob. And we've got a push on Blob, his second foul in the early going here of the second half. He has four in the game. Second team foul on Evansville. Blob comes off, and Dan Gottfried reports on. Gottfried set out a good chunk of the first half of play. Number 53, Dan Gottfried back in the lineup, replacing Blob. One minute gone by, second half. And they need to get him into the into the offensive flow. Again, Corbett misses the shot. Treffler the rebound. But that's a tough shot. After for three. But you, Kraken climbs the board. And you know, they, they've got Evansville on a night where they're not really shooting the ball that well. Corbett on the drive. Did he draw the foul? Yes, he did on Treffler, according to Eric Harmon. Treffler's second personal foul. That's three team fouls already on Evansville. We're not even a minute and a half gone by in this second half. Well, if there's any doubt what Dayton was going to do coming out of the locker room in the second half, there's no doubt now. They've yeah. given it to Anthony Corbett every time and said, look, get yourself involved, take the ball to the basket, get us some points. He's already had two shots here in the first minute and a half, and he has his first point of the night. 16 points, 7 rebounds, and 19 points, 9 rebounds, 4 assists. His two performances this year against the Aces. Flyers back to within 10. Treffler penetra. Oh, what a oh, block great block. That's the type of play that can get the crowd back in it and the team. Nickel Knight. McCracken fighting for the rebound, and Brian Hill pulled them down. Personal foul number one on Hill. That is the fourth on Evansville. Flyers trying to put together a little bit of a run here to get off the uh, schneid, so to speak, in the second half. Really coming out aggressive and proactive, but again, they've only got two points on the board. Exactly. Got to get the ball in the basket. Inbounds to Corbett. 
over Gottfried. High bank. Hill claims the rebound and is tied up by Nickel Knight. It'll belong to Dayton on the alternating possession. Wait a minute. They changed the arrow too quickly over there. It should be Dayton ball. They messed up. The guy changed the arrow too quickly. Now, hang on. The, the arrow was wrong in the first place is what it was because Dayton inbounded to start the second half of play. So this ball does belong to Abbottsville. The arrow was wrong as we looked across the way to begin with. The officials on top of it. Ted Hillary handed it to Abbottsville. Three-point try by Hafner. 16 now for Scott Hafner. I, I tell you what, you, you can't give him an eyelash of time to... Oh, he squares up space so quickly. You know, we saw Jody Littrell, who's another very fine three-point shooter for Butler, but he needs time to really set for a moment. Hafner doesn't need it. Here's Crafton in transition. Crafton on the tip. Now, how could Corbett let him go up and get that tip? Reed Crafton. Reed all five foot ten inches. Miguel Knight almost traveled. Troy McCracken on the block on Gottfried. Gottfried did a great job that time of not going for the fake. McCracken was trying to draw the foul. Evansville again asserting itself. Well, I'm surprised they didn't put that one up. <laughs> Gottfried left unattended. Only his second field goal. He has four points. Well, I tell you, this Evansville will just pick you apart. Make one slight mistake, uh, they'll hit you for a layup, or they get that three-pointer off. Corbett against Hill. His first field goal of the game comes with 16.34 to go in the second half. Really, the only difference was at that time, you know, he, he, he got a shot where he was shooting and there wasn't a hand in his face. Good look from Trefta into Hafner, and Hafner has 18 points. Norm Grevy. McCracken on Gottfried with the turnaround. The tip by Corbett. Corbett fighting for the rebound. And it's knocked out of bounds by McCracken. It'll belong to Evansville. Almost four minutes gone by, second half. Flyers leading by, or I should say the Aces leading here by 17 points. Well, again, and Evansville's a tough team to come back against when you get down by, you know, double digits because they're so well schooled uh, and so well disciplined. You know, they're going to play just as hard up 17. They're not likely to uh, to let up and, and let you back in the ball game. Miguel Knight with Reed Crafton literally in his shirt. Corbett against Hill. Second field goal for Anthony Corbett. He has all six second half points for Dayton. They're still being outscored. Nine to six here at the outset of the second half. After. How did Lou Henson let him get away? Well, it used to be that there weren't a whole lot of players who transferred and then had a lot of success at another school, but uh, you see more and more of that now. On the drive, Shreffler is fouled. I'll tell you what, Shreffler has a good first step, well, doesn't he? He sure does. I mean, this entire ball club has a lot of uh, quickness on the half. I don't know if they've got a lot of breakaway speed, but they certainly got great quickness in the half-court offensive situation. Quickness, court savvy. You know, the other thing that's unusual about Evansville is a lot of teams that you see that shoot a high percentage from the field are teams that don't really get out and pressure you much defensively. But this team, I mean, that's what it's all about. They're all over you defensively, uh, you know, when you've got the ball. But they still have the strength and uh, uh, to maintain their shooting touch on the other end. 15-01 left to be played. The Aces continue impressive. Back after these messages on the MCC Basketball Championship Network. The Egghead Discount Software Company, America's leading software seller, had a growing problem. It seems they were growing, but their communication system wasn't. 
So the people at GTE analyzed the problem and designed a customized system that improved efficiency, reduced network costs, and left plenty of room for growth. You see, at GTE, it's not just communications we offer, it's solutions. Call us, no matter what size you are. Are you in the market for a new custom van? Well, it's spring break time, and all during the month of March, Kenny Kent will be offering discounts on every custom van in stock during our spring break vacation sale. The only custom van outlet with factory direct discount prices is dealing on every custom van in stock. You can save up to $4,000 on a beautiful custom van. That's right, save $4,000 during the spring break vacation sale. Kenny Kent Custom Van Outlet, 220 Diamond Avenue. What a great place to buy a custom van. At Red and White, we feel it's our civic duty as a progressive merchant to promote the welfare of our community. Hi, I'm Howdy Bell, and we'd like to help the churches, PTAs, or any nonprofit organizations. Have your group members save a thousand complete Red and White brand labels. Bring them into your local Red and White supermarket, and we'll give your treasurer a check for $15. It's one way we can help those that make our community such a wonderful place to live. For details, stop by your local Red and White store. Tell a friend. Dayton uh, struggled in the first half and not off any better in the second half. Just two of nine in the second half. And again, you know, I, I've been critical saying that they're just taking too many tough shots, but at the same time, Evansville hadn't given them many easy shots. No, Evansville's not giving them any easy shots, really. Greavy. Oh, nice dish to McCracken and the block, but a foul on Gottfried. And that's his third. Fifth on the team. But again, that, yeah, but that's the way you have to attack this defense. You need, when, when you see a break, uh, you got to take it to the basket, but you've got to be ready to pass it very quickly because somebody's going to play help defense and pick you up, and you've got to be able to make a good, quick, crisp, short pass to another player who, who will be open. One of the few times that Dayton executed uh, you know, that well uh, in this ball game. The left-hander McCracken hits on a pair. He has seven points. A little over five minutes gone by. Second half. Aces leading by 15. Hafner. Brian Hill. McCracken fries the ball loose, literally. Springer to Greeby. Miguel Knight. Started by Reed Crampton off the pick by McCracken. Oh, good dish to McCracken. There's Corbett. Well, that play there has to draw uh, Jim Cruz uh, crazy because he teaches his smaller players to get defensive position and draw a charge. And, and uh, it looked to me like they drew a charge on that play. The foul is on Treffler, his third. 16 fouls already on Evansville. Oh, Nigel Knight did a nice, or other right, he did a nice job of drawing that foul. He really did, and but that's <laughs> that's got to hurt if you're an Evansville fan because they missed the charge down at the other end, and then 30 seconds later they call your uh, your guy for a charge. Six minutes gone by, second half. Dayton with perhaps a shot to get back into the game. Corbett fighting Mack for the basketball. Knight at the point, Springer for three. Yes. Ten-point ball game now in favor of Evansville. Well, first run Dayton's made. Let's see how Evansville answers. Treffler for three. That's how they'll answer. 15 for Treffler. His third three-pointer of the night. Do you believe he's a freshman? Nigel Knight. Thank you, Master. Nigel Knight. The action picking up on both sides offensively here. 13 minutes to go. Ma oh, they forgot about Hefner. And Chris Mack had an easy feed. 20 points now for Scott Hefner. There's no room for error when you play the Evansville Aces. 
Oh, he got fouled. Yep, Good call. On the hack as Norm Grevy went up on the shot. After his second personal, and that puts Evansville over the foul limit, Steve, with 12.39 to go. But in the first half, it didn't matter if they put the uh, Dayton Flyers at the free throw line. They just did not convert. Three of nine shooting from the foul line of the first half for the Flyers. They have converted all four of their free throw attempts, though, in this half. Make it five in a row. Maybe's first point of the night. He's got another free throw. Almost a 90% free throw shooter is Norm Grevy. Well, Dayton, you know, needs a couple of possessions here where they come up with some stops. Uh, Chris Mack, guarded by Corbett. Grevy reaching in a little too active defensively. Picks up his first personal. Only the second team foul on Dayton. Well, you have to like uh, Grevy's aggressiveness that time. But you don't like his decision making right there. But he's into the ball game. Trying to make some things happen. Chris Mack. Gets it to Hafner. Off the pick by Blob. There's Mack once again. <laughs> Trying to get it into Blob. And had one of the guards posted up down low. Blob with a good move. McCracken had the rebound for a moment. And Reed Preston leaves it short. And foul called on Blob. Olaf Blob has fouled out of the game, I believe, if that's the call. It is on Blob. We've got him for five. Leads with four first half points. Fouls out with 12.01 to go. And the lineup for Evansville, number 53, Dan Godfrey, replacing Block. Aces lead by 11. You know, you've got a cracking going to the line. And now you've got a, a you know a, a bad situation developing because Godfrey has three, right? Yep. So so they certainly can't afford to lose him. One and one opportunity for Troy McCracken to the free throw line. Chance to get it under 10. Dan Gottfried with the rebound. Scott Schreffler. You know, you watch this team play and, and you realize immediately why Jim Crew's name is being mentioned for some of the open jobs in the country. Gottfried! Passed by Dan Gottfried. Springer. There's Grevy out of the perimeter. This is Nickel Knight. Knight with a bit of a force, but I believe he drew the foul on Reed Crafton, and in fact he did. Second personal on Crafton. That's, that's, the, uh, that's all natural ability on Nickel Knight. You know, he's got the great legs. He can really leap, and he'll get you up in the air and hang. And uh, you know He knows how to draw the contact. with 13. Can cut the deficit to 11 once again. Dan Gottfried the rebound. Chris Mack looks like a Marine, doesn't he? <laughs> They're yeah, really a, a, a good recruit for them out of Cincinnati. Yep. A player who, uh, for whatever reason, wasn't recruited heavily by some of the real major uh, college uh, colleges. And starting as a freshman, he's going to be a real good player in this league. Three-pointer by Scott Schreffler. He has 18 points. Three for Scott Four three-point field goals by Schreffler in this game. Grevy loses his footing. Travel. 10.48 to go. And again, the Aces put some space between themselves and the Flyers of Dayton will return after these messages on the MCC Basketball Network. The organizers of a recent national sports event had a slight coordination problem. 
how to link 34 events in six different cities. So GTE designed and maintained a network that not only connected people to information, but made it possible for the competition to begin. You see, at GTE, it's not just communications we offer, it's solutions. Call us. We're ready. The best-dressed hams wear the Amgi label. From a festive holiday dinner to a late-night snack, served on your finest china or stacked in a hearty sandwich, nothing beats the wonderful taste of Amgi ham. It's tender and juicy with a rich flavor that's just right for so many occasions. And quality. Well, you know you can trust Emgi for the freshest, leanest ham anywhere. Your family will love it. Mmm, gimme Emgi. Evansville Cable TV has what you want to see, plus all new money-saving packages. Variety Pack. For just $30.75, you get basic cable, two premium channels, and a basic extra outlet. Choice Pack. All that plus a remote control for just $37.75. Or Super Pack. Get it all, including four premium channels, even on your extra outlet. Call 422-1167 to take advantage of our new low prices every day. Wayne Larrabee, Steve Grody in the MCC semifinals. The championship game coming up tomorrow night. Evansville shoots about 45% from three-point range during the regular season. So they're not quite as sharp here tonight, but their production there has been much greater than Dayton, to say the least. Hafner, rebound taken down by Nigel Knight. So Evansville's coming off one of their poor performances against St. Louis in that their last regular season game, they shot just 38% from the field. So, uh, you know, with a little bit of a layoff, Dayton was hoping to catch them, uh, you know, on the downswing, and... Uh, Good throw by Springer, he has five. But again, if they're on a downswing and they're not shooting well, they're certainly making up for it by playing uh, excellent defense. And this foul is off the ball. I believe it's Godfrey on a push. No, block. Godfrey's fourth personal foul. Well, they've got Blob out of the game already with five fouls. Now you have Gottfried with four. I'm thinking you run Corbett at him every ch chance you get. Up off the bench and reporting on Chris Bamba, replacing 6'9", Dan Gottfried. Bamba, 6'7", a senior from Bloomington, Indiana. Anthony Corbett at all eight of his points in the second half. Two out of four from the line tonight. Well, Bamba's their best post defender, so they don't lose anything in that area. Uh, but he's going to, this role's going to be just a set pick. He injects enthusiasm. He's a hard worker. Well, when you get Gottfried out of the lineup, you take one of the scorers out. Chris Mack, the rebound. This is Reed Trapton. Well, you know, you, you look at this Evansville ball club, and, you know, it looks like they could run forever and ever and ever. I mean, it looks like they could play two games in a row and not get tired. Crafton at the back door, and a foul coming up on Bamba on the rebound battle over the back. Well, I tell you, you look at all the fouls that they've got at the center position. Yeah. Their practices must be really a, a, a something to see if these guys <laughs> bang around like that. Yeah, they don't blow the whistle in practice except to change the set, right? Here comes Bamba a little late on the rebound. Yeah. And Corbett back at the line. Corbett, Corbett three out of six at the line. And you can see it a little more graphically there. <laughs> Dayton's getting some opportunities at the free throw line here in the second half. Nine out of 12 from the free throw line are the fly. Nine out of the 11 from the free throw line are the Flyers of the second half. Miguel Knight claims the rebound. Could be a most important possession right here. 11 point lead for Evansville. Yeah, another chance to get it uh, under 10. And that always just seems to be a, a, you know, something that turns the momentum. Three point try by Robinson. Three for Robinson. 
That got it under 10. Let's see what happens now. Chris Mack is fouled by Robinson. <laughs> well, that happens uh, oftentimes. You make a big basket, get a little pumped up. <laughs> First personal. But again, I thought second that, personal on Robinson, third on the team. Watch it. You know, I thought Miguel Knight might get out there, and you know, if Miguel if Miguel Knight's going to give that type of help and stay on the baseline, he may as well get all the way over and cut the defender off, the offensive man off. Robinson hooked the arm of Hafner, and right away Robinson with his third personal foul, fourth team foul. And Scott Hafner, who shoots almost 90 percent from the free throw line, is at the line. A little over nine minutes to go. Uh, in Evansville now, you've got a team out there that goes about 5'10", 6'1", 6'4", 6'5", 6'6". The league champion. After is four out of five at the line. Nine-point lead for the Aces. Here come the Flyers. Knight gets the step on the drive. Nicely done. Well, now that's where you're going to miss uh, Flop and Gottfried. Either one of those would have been there to cut off, cut off the, the lane to the basket and possibly come up with the block shot. Ola Flop, you can see him top of your screen standing up on the Evansville bench. He looks like he's going to check in anyway. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I see. I see. This is probably a bit one of the bigger possessions of the of the game right now. Got a good defensive sequence going for Dayton. Chris Mack is clobbered by Corbett. Second personal on Corbett. Fifth on the team. You see, Evansville just got such great patience. They'll just run it, and run it, and run it. That was the tail end of what seemed like an endless weave of players in and out of the lane into the back door. They get you out of position eventually, Steve. You know, that's the thing about it, about that kind of an offense. If you execute it well, well you, you know, eventually will get the defense out of position. And, and a team that runs an offense like this, you say, you know, why play this team man to man? Why use up all that energy? But they're such good shooters from the three point area, you know, that the three point field goal is really. You know, I guess the biggest effect it's, it's had is it's drawn team out, teams out of zone. They have to play man. The lead is nine for Evansville. <laughs> Miguel Knight, Ray Springer back at the point. <laughs> this is Corbin. Well, for whatever reason, now the defensive help has disappeared along that baseline. Nobody's rotating over. Very unusual to get a lane to the basket without someone stepping in front to draw a charge. Hafner! Boy, he quiets the crowd. He has ice in his veins. 23 points for Hafner. Didn't take him long to get that shot off, did it? Seven and a half minutes to go. One pass and a wide open jumper. Knight on the drive. There it is again, Steve. Thank you thing. mentioned that lane has been open ever since Godfrey and Blob went out of the game. Again, the lead is down to seven. This is Shreffler. Crafton. 20 to go on the shot clock. Plenty of time. Treffler. Boy, they hardly ever take bad shots. And look who pops wide open down low, and Corbett <laughs> commits the foul. Chris Bamba will go to the line. It's just a matter of time. Just a matter of time. 6.48 left to go in the game. And heading to the free throw line, Chris Bamba, senior forward out of Bloomington, Indiana. It's six straight free throws to help clinch the MCC championship against Loyola. One of the quintessential role players on this team. Not going to score a lot. 
but we'll set the picks and screens and grab an occasional rebound for you. Corbett up high for the board. Well, they keep knocking down the, uh, knocking down this lead point by point. Basket here, and that'd be, it'd be as close as they've been in a long time. Corbett. Tipped away by Crafton, and the foul is called on Reed Crafton, his third. Anthony Corbett, who has 12 points, all of which have come in the second half, will be at the line. Boy, and they're scoring all their points from the free throw line. But there's been all free throws and layups. 6.33 left to go. Flyers have crept back into the game. What was the largest lead? About 17 points for the Aces earlier tonight? Uh, yeah, somewhere in that neighborhood. 13 now for Corbett. <laughs> 14 points for Corbett. Standing ovation for the hometown Flyers. They have charged back into the game, and with six and a half minutes to go, they trail by just six. We'll be back after these words on the MCC Basketball Network. At the St. Petersburg Times, press operators had to wait while pages were sent by hand from an office miles away. But then, with the help of GTE, they came up with a way to send those pages over fiber optic phone lines, saving precious time and money. You see, at GTE, it's not just communications we offer, it's solutions. Call us. We deliver. Many lawnmower companies make quick start guarantees. But what about the rest of the mower? At Snapper, we guarantee more than quick starting. If you're not satisfied with your new Snapper's performance within 14 days of purchase, we'll refund your money. Great, but I already bought Mr. Quick Start here. Right now, Snapper dealers are offering great trade-in allowances. So now's the time to trade. Stone Implement, Leland's Mower and Tiller, Scotty's Lawn Equipment Sales and Service. Get on up, start the day right now. Get on up, work up an appetite now. McDonald's introduces two new breakfasts that start with homemade buttermilk biscuits. New steak biscuit with lean tender beef and new sausage gravy biscuit. Home style gravy loaded with pork sausage. Get on up, come on in for the good time, great taste. New steak biscuit and new sausage gravy biscuit. Of McDonald's. That's why Dayton has climbed back into this game. They really turned around the shooting statistic. Before they went on that 10 of 11 run, they were shooting at a 30% in the second half. Well, you have to believe off this time now, they're going to look for half here. You know, big, big possession. Got to go to your ace. Hell, they're all aces, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> going to say ace, so to speak. Greffler in traffic. Well, oh, he's in that lane. Could have got a three-second call that time. Hefner for that, two. That's just too tough. I mean, Miguel Knight was not that far from him. Three V can hit three-point shots if they give him the opportunity. Corbett's the man they want down low. Corbett gets it back. Anthony Corbett. 16 for Anthony Corbett, who really has some liberty inside now with the big people, Gottfried and Blob on the bench for Evan Phil. And Gottfried gets up. He'll be coming back in with four personal fouls here. Yeah, it's just a matter now. Every time Dayton gets the ball, they're just taking it right to the basket. Rippler on the drive. 20 points for Scott Truffler. The freshman came to play tonight, didn't he? Boy, uh, they don't get much better than him as a as freshman. Springer over Reed Crafton. Springer gets a reprieve. Ray Springer. 
Four minutes, 56 seconds left to go. The Flyers hanging in, trailing the top-ranked Aces by six. We'll return after these words on the MCC Television Network. The Egghead Discount Software Company, America's leading software seller, had a growing problem. It seems they were growing, but their communication system wasn't. So the people at GTE analyzed the problem and designed a customized system that improved efficiency, reduced network costs, and left plenty of room for growth. You see, at GTE, it's not just communications we offer, it's solutions. Call us, no matter what size you are. You can start enjoying better pictures the minute you bring your film to Schmidt Photo. And you'll have those pictures in about 30 minutes. Because these are your memories, you have every reason to expect the best pictures possible. And you will enjoy your pictures more with Schmidt Photo. Color prints in about 30 minutes at all four locations, including Washington Square and Town Square Mall. Schmidt Photo. Picture perfect. It's amazing what a little paint will do for a room or a piece of furniture. You know, I've learned a lot about fixing up the houses we bought over the years, and I'll tell you who taught me. Keisters. The folks at Keisters know what they're doing. Hardware, paint, lumber, you name it, they've got the answers. And Keisters stores are practically everywhere. Hey, I'm no expert handyman, but with Keisters handy, I don't have to be. The absence of the foul play, big men for Evansville, has helped lead to Dayton's dominance on the board, and a couple of offensive rebounds help also. Ray Springer puts that one home. Well, and it, this is just like Evansville. I mean, they defy logic and they defy the odds. I mean, their opponents out-rebound them. Their opponents uh, go to the free throw line uh, more often, and, and they still come up with the win, and that's what it's all about, I guess. Yeah, it's that last statistic you mentioned there, <laughs> wins. Or points that count. <laughs> Chris Mack slipped inside, left oh, it short. Boy. Oh, Robinson oh. had the rebound. They had headed back the other way, the Aces, and Robinson fumbled it out of play. Oh, that's frustrating. Boy, that was uh, that that was just real big there. Aces by six. And, and the way this game's gone, Evansville is type of team that. You, you know, is it going to blow this opportunity? Yeah, I look for them to score here. Let's see if they make him pay. Trepler tipped away oh, by Springer. Fly. Here come the Flyers. Oh, he, Springer looked like he carried it. Might have carried it. Knight looks for help now. Here's Grevy. He can hit that. That's a bad Corbett. shot. Oh, Corbett apparently with an elbow against Godfrey gets called for the foul. Seventh team foul on Dayton. That is the fourth on Anthony Corbett. You know, you like Reeves, uh confidence, but that just was not a good shot attempt at this stage of the game. It's a key possession. That ball could have been tipped. Well, I'd, I'd have to get another angle to see if there was any real contact under there. But it must have been something significant because they've let them bang around all night long. Godfrey has seven points now. Well, Grevy's a almost a 38% shooter from three-point range. He's one of the people that would go to uh, from three-point land, but I think you're right. That was just not a good decision on, on that particular possession. Now the Aces have the eight-point lead again. Coming up on four minutes left to go in the game. Corbett. And he gets the roll. 18 second half points for Anthony Corbett. Yeah, and he's on a roll. You know, they're just coming down and giving the ball to him and say, make something happen. The top seeded aces, 23 and four. 10 and 2 in the MCC, leading by just six over the Flyers, who were 12 and 16 overall this season. Six and six in the MCC, fourth well, seed in the tournament. Now it's up to the defense. Dayton's got to come up with some stops here. After 10 to go now on the shot clock. 
five to go on the shot clock. Kraft in for three. Rebound, Nigel Knight. Flyers to close within four. Good Bring job. Back at the point. Very good job. Poise, big possession. Take your time. Reverse the ball. Get it into your. There you go. Get it to Corbett. Oh! Yes, and a foul! Well, again, it's the dribble penetration that's been the problem for Evansville. They've done an excellent job uh, the majority of the game and you know in, in solving that problem but I'd say over the last uh, 12 15 minutes anytime Dayton's wanted to they've taken the ball right to the basket Corbett trying to complete a three-point play and cut the deficit to three 21 second half points for Anthony Corbett and it's a three-point ball game Time left in the game, Laura, right corner of your screen. Well, this is where you got to go to. That's the guy you want. He'll get the shot this time. I have to believe that. Unless they just really get out of position and double and triple teaming. Three-pointer by Hefner. Robinson the rebound, and the Flyers trailing by three. Take over offensively. <laughs> Corbett against Godfrey. He's hot. I, I think I'd get a timeout here. Reed Crafton. Going to Shuffler. Batted away by Knight. Picked up by Corbett. And the Flyers, who once trailed by 17, could take the lead on this possession. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. What a big shot. That's his, that's his first basket of the ball game. One twenty-seven to go. The Flyers lead by one. Back after these words on the MCC Championship Network. Getting where you want to be financially can be just as tricky as walking through this maze. That's why it's smart to go with Old National. We know the way. We'll help you make the right decisions. Show you advantages other people miss. And make sure you never get sidetracked. Everybody's looking for financial security. We'll show you how to find it. Old National. Old National. When I was younger, I couldn't wait to get a nice set of wheels. I got them all right, and they've changed my life forever. Fortunately, I found out about the Deaconess Rehabilitation Center, the trained specialists at Deaconess using facilities like their new independent mall and programs like work hardening showed me I had a decision to make. I could either sit on the sidelines or get back in the game. For me, Deaconess was the right decision. Possession that put Dayton on top. And, and Norm who'd have, Greavy. Who'd have thought anybody but Corbett would shoot the ball at that stage? It's been all Anthony Corbett in the second half for Dayton. Dayton shooting 62% from the field here in the second half. The top seeded Evansville Aces, regular season champions of the NCC. Godfrey down low, ran out of real estate. Grafton for three. Yes! Oh, they are tough. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'll tell you, this team has not wavered at all. Oh, boy. They missed Robinson that time. There was a momentary double team, and they missed the open man. Godfrey saves. Oh. And apparently, Reed Crafton, who fell into Jim Cruz, the head coach of Evansville, stepped on the sideline on the save attempt. There are some of the Aces supporters. There's Jim Cruz, one of the best young coaches in the country, bar none. 
Aces leading by two. Under a minute to go. Swing it, get it to Corbett. <laughs> there should be no doubt what you're looking for here. Anthony Corbett. Corbett's not moving. Miguel Knight. Corbett trying to pry it loose, send it along to Evansville. 30 seconds to go. Don Donaher not happy that there wasn't a foul called on that play. Crafton all gets a step on Corbett who reached out and grabbed him. He had to because Reed Crafton was heading for an easy two. Corbett's fifth versatile foul. He leaves with 23 points, all of which came in the second half of play. The big foul, the number 20, Anthony Corbett, his fifth personal foul. Standing ovation. Well, this is a new chapter in the basketball tradition of Dayton. This is their first year as a member of the conference. And although they've struggled through an up and down 12 and 16 season, six and six in the MCC, they provided some thrills here in this tournament. And they still have 18 seconds left and they trail by just two. Back in the well, I don't know what Evansville shoots from the free throw line as a team, but I have to believe they're pretty darn good. 74%. Yeah. Pretty darn good. 76% in league play. Reed Crafton. Reed Crafton. 75%. Oh, ho. Oh, they still have a chance to tie or take the lead with a three point shot. Final 13 seconds. 10 seconds to go. Nikhil Knight to tie. Robinson had the rebound. There's a foul called now by Ted Hillary with five seconds to go. It's on the rebound. Is that on the shot or was it on the rebound against Robinson? The Evansville foul is number 34, Chris Mack. His first personal foul. Foul apparently coming up on Chris Mack, I believe. Let's see if we can pick it up on this replay here. There's Chris Mack in the middle of your screen. I think they called a foul on Mack. They did call it on Mack. It's his first. Robinson will be hit, or rather uh, Knight will be heading to the free throw line. Well, Knight was doing what he does best, which is, you know, take the ball in close to the basket and jump over people. Mack got a piece of the ball, but and finishing off the block out a piece of the wrist. Miguel Knight is a 73.6% free throw shooter. He has 17 points here tonight and has connected on three out of five from the free throw line this evening. And you're right. Uh, Corbett had to take that foul down at the other end, but now obviously you really need him in a ball game like this. He's been your offense in the second half. Ace is leading. By two, the foul by Corbett cost them his presence in the final seconds of the game. But it also put the uh, Evansville player at the free throw line, and he missed the front end of the one and one. It put Reed Craft in there, and he missed the free throw. So, although a costly foul on one hand, they did the job, and they came out of it trailing by just two. Yeah, they wouldn't be in this position if it wasn't for that. Exactly. Miguel Knight. That was pretty smooth. This one could tie it. Five seconds to go. Timeout Evansville. We may be heading to an extra session. 19 points for Nigel Knight and a couple of pressure pack free throws to not the game. Well, this is a this is really an outstanding comeback, and uh, again, Evansville still playing well. Uh, Dayton finally got on track offensively, uh, hit some big shots, got a hot hand, 
And for whatever reason, something's broken down in the Evansville defense because in the second half of this ball game, they've been able to drive the ball to the baseline, and of course, they've really gotten to the free throw line also. If you're Evansville, if you're Jim Cruz, what are you looking to set up? You have five minutes to go. Five seconds to go, I should say. Well, you know, I wouldn't think they're going to get a great shot. It's going to be a three-pointer, that's for sure. And, uh, fortunately for them, they've got three or four guys who can do it. You've got Hafner, certainly Schreffler, who has 20 points here tonight. And really, you know, Reed Crafton has hit three field goals, and he's a guy you might be able to free up, too. Well, it's... Uh, you know, they may, they may very well use Hafner as a decoy. Um, they'll get off a shot. But it, it'll be uh, under some pressure, that's for certain, I would think. Again, Anthony Corbett fouled out of the game a few seconds ago. Finished with 23 points, and he spearheaded the comeback of the Flyers, who trailed by 17 earlier in this second half of play. They have caught Evansville. With five seconds to go, the Aces will have possession of the basketball. There's Don Donaher and company. Jim Cruz and his group. Well, normally when you come back from a large, large deficit like this, you like to catch a team in the last minute uh, and go ahead and hope that adrenaline can carry you through, through the remainder of the game. You, you, you expend a lot of energy coming from a big, a, that's big the, deficit. That's the other theory, Stephen. Sometimes you come back from that distance, expend all that energy, you don't have enough to get over the top sometimes. Yeah. I, I don't like uh, Dayton's chances in overtime. I really don't. I think they've, you know, they've lost Corbett. They've expended a lot of energy. I think it's, uh, uh, you know, I, I think it's Evansville's uh, uh, ball game in overtime. We shall see in the next five seconds if an overtime session is indeed in order. We're tied at 69. Five seconds to go. Evansville basketball. Well, this is real interesting. There's only one, one player at half court, and the other three are, are down uh, in scoring position. Chris Mack on the inbound to Reed Crafton. Hafner lets it go. We'll go to overtime. It's tied at 69 at the end of regulation time. I got it to the man you would think. I mean, that's who you want taking that kind of a shot. Scott Hafner. Let's watch it again. Steve, really, this is this is good execution. It was a very interesting play that they diagrammed. It's a shame we don't have the entire court. Uh, in the picture, but uh, there were a lot of things going on, and they got the ball to who they wanted, and that's, uh, for, for most people, that's not a good shot. For Hafner, it's probably a 50-50 bet. He got around a defender, didn't have anyone in his face, squared up, and put forth about a 22-footer, thereabouts. Five minutes of overtime coming up. We'll be back after these words on the MCC Television Network. When should one consult with an attorney after being injured in an accident? After being released from their doctor? After they have tried to settle their own claim with the insurance company? The truth of the matter is, an attorney should be consulted as soon as possible after an accident. At Robert John & Associates, initial consultations are free. If you hire us, there is no fee until recovery is made. If you choose not to, you will at least be better informed. Call Robert John & Associates, 425-2718. Sunoco Express Marts are for people on the go who like value and convenience. Now through March 13th, when you fill up with clean-burning Sunoco Super Unleaded Gasoline, you'll get any Mars candy bar free. This offer is good at all Sunoco Express Marts in Evansville, Mount Vernon, and Newburgh. While you're there, try our new salads made fresh daily in our deli department. In the mood for a sweet treat, Sunoco Express Marts now have skinny dip premium low-calorie frozen desserts and ice cream at selected locations. Gas up and go with savings at Sunoco Express Marts. There's one near you. It's double dealing days at Lindsay Lincoln Mercury Azuzu. What a deal on this special edition 89 Topaz, fully loaded and customized with a luggage rack, sunroof, and sports stripes for only $208 a month. Or this 89 Tracer XE two-door with over 68 standard features, including a special package of tinted glass, a sunroof, sports stripes, and aluminum wheels for only $99.99.
The 89 Topaz or the 89 Tracer XC. Two special editions only at Lindsay Lincoln Mercury Isuzu. Back and on the tap for Dayton against Godfrey for Evansville, and we're underway in the overtime session. Well, for Dayton now, somebody's got to find a hot hand offensively with Corbett out of the lineup. I would guess Miguel, Miguel Knight would be the, the most likely candidate, but I would expect Robinson to see, see the ball a little bit also. Reed Crafton from deep. He has 10. Miguel Knight. Springer trying to answer from three-point land. It's a two. He had a, he had a foot on that three-point line, apparently. Nine points for Springer. But that's encouraging because they found some offense from someone other than uh, with Corbett out of the lineup. And it's really been Corbett and Miguel Knight. Third overtime game in MCC tournament history. The winner here gets Xavier tomorrow night. Craft into Godfrey, playing with four personal fouls. Scott Shreffler. And I'd say Evansville uh, doesn't look as sharp as they've looked uh, earlier in the ballgame running their offense. Chris Mack on the tap of his miss. Six for Mack. Basket by Dave Godfrey. Oh, they gave it to Godfrey. Ninth. There, now, see, that's the difference. See, with Godfrey in the ball game, he cut off the penetration on the baseline. Three for me. Flyers. Surprise, surprise. Oh, <laughs> Evansville last field goal was by Chris Mack. Here's Mack. Beat Godfrey. Oh, what a great pass. You know, they, they hurt at every position. Godfrey. Scored every well, I guess both teams scored every possession thus far in the overtime. Reevy trying to pass down low to Robinson, who was well covered by Mack. Ace is leading by two. There's Hafter. Over Springer, he left it short. Kraft and Knifing in, knocked it out of play. Uh, Reed Crafton's all over the floor, isn't he? In the passing lanes, handling the basketball, knifing through to knock away a rebound. Well, Evansville real upset. They thought that Hafner really got fouled on that shot attempt. Nickel Knight. That's all athletic ability right there. 21. Good defense. It's a great athletic play. 2.20 to go in the overtime session. Dayton looking very resilient right now. Crafton needs some help. Knight almost fried it loose. Ruffler. Crafton for three. Yes! His second three-pointer of the extra session. These guys are like gnats. They never go away. Knight over Gottfried. Reeve. Oh, they got Springer wide open for a three. Reeve draws the foul on Hafner. His fourth versatile. Springer stood there all alone the entire it. time. Reeve had the ball in his hands. Springer's just standing there. Nobody around him at the top of the key. He would have been able to measure that one, so to speak, had he gotten the ball. Well, and again, you like to go to the hot hand. Reeve off the bench with five points here tonight. Three of three at the line. He can br bring the Flyers back to within one. The two-point ball game. Reed Crafton, a junior from Indianapolis, Indiana. Chris Mack. On Robinson, partially blocked by McCracken. Here comes Springer. The Knight. Knight. 
Time left in the right-hand corner of your screen. First overtime session. Hafner, yes! Good play! <laughs> uh, I, I can sit I can here and watch. Uh, we've, had, we've had great, great ball game. I can sit here and watch these guys play the rest of the night. Knight on the move and a traveling violation. Under a minute to go. The Evansville lead is three. Well, sure, sure like to see that one again. Up off the bench, Kenny Branch comes on, replacing Grevy in the lineup. We talked about it. Branch, an excellent defensive player, perhaps the best athlete for sheer athletic ability on the Dayton squad. Full court pressure. Differential, differential of about 11 seconds between the shot clock and the game clock. Godfrey had it poked away from behind. Aces leading 82-79 by three. 15 on the shot clock. You don't want to foul now. You don't want to make the mistake of fouling now. Let's and there's see. a foul right there, Springer reaching in. You know, if you're going to foul, why, why let him run off 37 seconds of the shot clock and foul with 20 seconds to play? And send this man to the line. Hafner, of the free throw line, has hit on five out of six here tonight. And as I've been mentioning, he's almost a 90% free throw shooter. 20 seconds to go. Evansville leading by three. He can put nails in the coffin. One and one. One and one. The lead is four. Scott Hafner for the seventh time as a 30-plus game this season. Springer for three. Rock. Mack. And with 12 seconds to go, traveling the call. Reed Crafton got a piece of that three-point shot. <laughs> he has played a big ball game. And really I'm not talking is. from a scoring standpoint. Just been everywhere. He's got 13 points, but he's hit some three-pointers, three of them, matter of fact. He's run the ball club, been in the passing lanes. Reeve blocked by Hafner, knocked out of bounds. Nine seconds remaining. Evansville really asserting itself in the final minute and a half of this overtime period. Reeve forces a three. McCracken fighting for the rebound. Time winding down, and that is it. What a ball game. Jim Cruz and Don Donaher meet near center court on the sidelines. The Evansville Aces have escaped with an 84-79 victory over the Dayton Flyers. We'll be back with some final comments after these words on the MCC Television Network. It's a small town, homegrown, made the way you make your own pizza. Tombstone. My job's pretty important, I think. See, I weigh double top pizza. Double tops like our original pizza, but we double the cheese and we add more meat. Now that should weigh about two pounds, and if it doesn't, I stop everything and fix it. Of course, sometimes if it weighs a little more, well, nobody's perfect. Tomb Ooh. Tombstone. Now, with any entree at Ponderosa, you also get our new Grand Buffet. And how grand is grand? Well, let's take a look. Hold this. Excuse me. Soups, zucchini. Fried zucchini. Script girl. Salads. Ooh, chicken wings and pastas. Chili. Vegetables. And you mind we're working here? Sorry. Yogurt, fresh fruit, corn, beans. I guess you get the idea. Ponderosa's Grand Buffet makes your entree grander.
the soybean grower's world takes enough surprising turns. You don't need crop rotation complications. Turn to preview to control the toughest weeds and rotate from clean beans to healthy corn with no carryover, no surprises. Preview. It'll be Evansville and Xavier for the NCAA tournament bid of the championship game of the MCC tournament coming up tomorrow night. And I think, Steve Grota, you had the, the line of the night that uh, you could watch these guys play this game all night. Oh, there's no question. Uh, just, uh, you know, uh, credit to both schools. I just thought Evansville really played an outstanding ball game. And credit to Dayton. I mean, what a gutsy comeback. It, it you know, hardly ever in the entire ball game it looked like they'd ever had the ability to get back in it. And they just... Uh, fought and crawled their way back and then hung in there and uh, uh, just came up a little bit short. Special thanks to our colleague Mike Blake of WFIE Television in Evansville for taking part in tonight's uh, telecast. Executive producer for this MCC Productions telecast has been MCC Commissioner Jim Schaefer, MCC Director of Communications Chris Denari, Associate Executive Producer Chico Fernandez of Telex Entertainment, our coordinating producer. Today's game has been directed by Bob Caldwell, television coordinator, MCC assistant commissioner, Brett Gilliland. Our statistician, Mark Wagner, did an outstanding job for us. For Steve Grody, this is Wayne Larrabee saying goodbye from the University of Dayton Arena in Dayton, Ohio. Again, the final score, the Evansville Aces, 84, and the Dayton Flyers, 79. This has been an MCC Productions Telex Entertainment telecast. Are you in the market for a new custom van? Well, it's spring break time, and all during the month of March, Kenny Kent will be offering discounts on every custom van in stock during our spring break vacation sale. The only custom van outlet with factory direct discount prices is dealing on every custom van in stock. You can save up to $4,000 on a beautiful custom van. That's right, save $4,000 during the spring break vacation sale. Kenny Kent Custom Van Outlet, 220 Diamond Avenue. What a great place to buy a custom van. Do something special for yourself. Women's Day 89. Sponsored by St. Mary's Medical Center and WFIE TV 14. Women's Day is Saturday, March 18th. 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the Green Convention Center. Guest speakers will inform you with a variety of medical, financial, and personal topics. All for women. Do something special for yourself. Come to Women's Day 89. March 18th at the Green Convention Center. did train for this race, but they didn't have to kill themselves to get ready. The Tinsel Triathlon involves a 5K run. That's about three miles. To get ready, you should run three miles twice a week, starting six weeks before the event. How you doing? All right, great. All right, go get him, Captain. See you later. Go get him! The bicycle leg of this race is about nine miles. Dust off your old bike or borrow one, and cycle nine miles twice a week. Don't die. You'll also need to hit the pool twice a week. This type of triathlon includes a 200-yard swim as the final event. Training and racing for a triathlon eventually comes down to a matter of degree. If you choose to do an event that's longer than a tinsel triathlon, all you need to do is increase your mileage. You don't need to increase the number of workouts you do. Twice a week in each event is still plenty. I'm cheering him on! <laughs> Yeah. Hey, give her your tag right there. Good job. <laughs> oh, 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 geez. Get it. All right. I did it. First time. I worked hard. Maybe it won't be the last. Robert and Armando are living proof you don't have to be an Ironman to compete in a triathlon. We'll train a little harder for the next one. We know what to expect now. Huh, Bob? <laughs> I kept thinking coming up that hill, I said, do I want to do another one? I know Armando is going to ask me, let's do another one. And I kept thinking, do I really want to do one? And uh, I, I, pr I probably will. I I In Alta Loma, California, I'm Mark Sisson. Desire and a will of iron make the difference here and during an event like a triathlon. If you reach inside for that extra effort, sometimes you will be surprised what you may find. Witness the story of Gary Clark from Tucson, Arizona.
Every day is a bonus day. It's, uh, it's incredible being able to share with individuals and, and what can be done. And I'm not saying there isn't any. There are obstacles in life, but we can overcome them. It just may take a little longer. Gary Clark is a 50-year-old heart transplant patient from Tucson, Arizona. He doesn't believe in statistics. Four months and 27 days after surgery, Gary completed his first triathlon, the first person ever to complete such a grueling event with another man's heart. That was three years ago, and he hasn't slowed down yet. For the first time in my life, I feel so good about myself because I'm able to give rather than take, and before it was just, when's it, when am I getting that paycheck? When's the bonus coming in? What kind of car am I driving? I mean, it was all materialistic, and now it's so, I sleep great at night. But that wasn't always the case. A viral infection had been slowly eating away at Gary's heart muscle for several years. He thought it was only a chest cold and continued his high-pressured executive lifestyle. By the time doctors had a chance to examine him, his heart was functioning at only 25 to 30 percent of its capacity. When I found out that I had the problem, I was going to have to eventually have a heart transplant. I had a very hard time dealing with it. Tremendous denial circumstances before I was even put in the hospital. I didn't want to believe it would happen to me. Ignoring the doctor's orders, Gary eventually got sicker. On October 25th, 1985, he admitted himself to the hospital. It took 36 days to find a donor, and Gary's heart was functioning at only 2% capacity when they wheeled him in for surgery. There was a period when Dr. Copeland uh, sat me down and says, you have 48 hours to live, and if we don't find a donor heart in that period of time, we're going to have to use the artificial heart. Ah, that's frightening. The donor heart came from Robert Tweed, a 19-year-old boy who had been fatally injured in a car accident. It was this tragic twist of fate that saved Gary Clark's life and spawned a deep and lasting friendship with the Tweed family. When I was a kid, my mom and dad used to say, God does things in mysterious ways, and I've always believed that. It's the biggest gift I've ever had in my life. That's truthful. That is truthful. At all. The tragic part of losing Robert, the great gift of having to know Gary, be around Gary and my family, and it's the best thing ever happened, believe me. I love you. <clears throat> After completing his first triathlon, Gary was hooked on the sport. He knows his limitations, and his last place finish only made him more of an inspiration to some of the younger athletes. This guy's out there living life again, and so he's showing us that there's no real boundaries. The limitations are really, really out there, and we might as well give it our best shot to try to get towards the limits. With inspiration like that running around, I mean, how could you not try to do better than you already have? Uh, He's kind of let me see uh, that it's important to, to enjoy life more, you know? I mean, there is, there's always that remote possibility that something, something like what happened to him is going to happen to you, you know? I just know that when it's time for me to go, I'm going to go with a smile on my face to doing every darn thing I can. Hopefully, it'll, it'll be getting ready to get on my bike or jump in the pool or go out for a run. Still moving in a direction of a positive sense to do something for myself and hopefully other people. Gary was close to death and reborn before he found his passion for life. From Mount Whitney, California, this is Thrill and Adventure. anything I can improve, Tom, just to uh, speak up. Remember, Andy, you have to turn your back to the target every time you make a full swing. On chip shots around the green, you start the forward swing by moving your right knee toward the target, like this. That's it. And when you're putting into the wind, first widen your stance, and then crouch a little. 
Thanks, Tom. You got any more pointers? The best one of all. You get a lesson every month, along with tips from players like Jack Nicklaus, Tom Kite, and Sam Snead. Golf Digest is like playing with the champs 12 times a year. Call 800-338-8000 for a full year of Golf Digest for $12.77, 46% off the cover price. Order now and also get golf lessons from the pros free. Call 800-338-8000. Watch two of the best football teams ever. ESPN's all-pro team of Mike Patrick and Joe Feisman bring you the head-to-head -head action of the 1989 Pro Bowl. Sunday, January 29th, live on ESPN. From the ESPN family to your family, best wishes for a happy and prosperous new year. For some, it is the adventure of mountains, the Himalayas, or the solitude of soaring. For others, it's the thrill of competition. Whatever it is, it's worth the climb, worth the time, the effort, whatever that may be. And it helps to retain one's sense of humor. Take a close look at this photo of Stacy Allison and her Sherpa guide on the summit of Everest. What's wrong with this picture? Yes, it's pink flamingos on Everest. If you would like to climb Mount Whitney, you'll need reservations. Here's where to write or call. No permits are required for day hikes. That's it for now. We'll see you again on Thrill and Adventure. I'm Greg Forge. And I'm Pam Thompson. Goodbye from Mount Whitney, California. The spectacular greeting outside. The scene inside, which welcomes you to Gothenburg for the 1988 Davis Cup final. Holders and favorite Sweden are in the final for the sixth consecutive year, while West Germany are aiming to win for the first time in 65 years. Both teams have had contrasting routes to the final. Sweden disposed of New Zealand in the opening round and France in the semi-finals, but nearly lost to Czechoslovakia in the second round. Only Stefan Edberg's heroics in that epic final rubber against Miloslav Macic saved the Swedes from an unexpected defeat. West Germany have made spectacular progress en route to the final. They haven't lost to Davis Cup rubber, and their only testing time came in the semi-final. There, they were taken to five sets in the doubles before defeating Yugoslavia. Hans Olsen, the Swedish team manager, was happy to name a full-strength team. And as Jarid, troubled by injury this year, is fit to play in the doubles. And with the world's number one and five in your team, it's no wonder you start as favourites. Nicky Pillay pulled a surprise by picking Karl Uwe Stäbe to play in the opening rubber, ahead of both Patrick Koonen and Eric Yellen. Boris Becker's selection was no surprise, although you wouldn't have thought so six weeks ago when his left foot was in plaster. World number one Mats Volander and Karl Uwe Stäbe get the final underway. Both are clay court specialists, but Volander must start as favourite. Volander did take charge of the rubber, going two sets up with play like this.
Carlo Vechte fought back to take the third and fourth set with some stirring play. to tighten that tummy with back-breaking, pain-making, time-taking, ordinary sit-ups? Now, work smarter with the Abdominizer, the intelligent alternative to sit-ups. Look, the Abdominizer targets the proper abdominal muscles, so each and every sit-up is made.